dear students in the section electricity within physics now we are going to see another experiment this is about the determination of internal resistance of a cell using the potentiometer already in the first experiment in electricity we found the internal resistance of a cell but not using the potentiometer where we we got the voltage and current readings using a voltmeter and ammeter right so when you use the voltmeter you usually take an assumption it's ideal and it has infinity resistance but actually that might not be the case the voltmeter doesn't have infinity resistance right you can assume the resistance is high the current that flows through volt voltmeter is very low but it's not zero therefore the findings from that experiment is as not perfect as what we are going to get here here we are going to use a potentiometer you know when when we use potentiometer and when we find the equilibrium position the, through the galvanometer there is zero current there is zero current understand right so what we are going to do here potentiometer i already explained to you in the previous experiment we have seen that in the previous experiment this is what the potentiometer uh, cable is or the string is you connect it with the battery if required a variable resistor and a plug key that's ready sometimes the variable resistor may not be there that is because say if you if you want to get the measurements of let's say 1.5 voltage to voltage then ideally what you have to get across here is 4 voltage then right in the middle or approximately in the middle you will get the equilibrium points right suppose if this battery is in 4 voltage then you don't need this resistance right away you can connect it but if the supply you have is 8 voltage then you don't you shouldn't have 8 voltage here because when you measure 1.5 voltage the readings will go to a corner then the fractional error of the readings will increase right so we will try to get the reading somewhere in the middle for that only we have this uh, rheostat and then what we do we will make another circuit how we do another circuit say this is the battery of which you want to find the internal resistance right connect it with a we'll use a resistor box and a tap key a separate circuit like this now what you do connect these two points make them equipotential make them equipotential from here let's take it to the galvanometer right you know the meaning of this setup safety for the galvanometer connect it like this so what will happen here right try to understand when when i close this switch this is going to be a tap switch only when you touch it the circuit works because i don't want the electromotive force of this to reduce i don't want this battery to run down so only when i take the measurements it has the, the circuit has to be complete otherwise no right so when when this is closed see there will be a current through this right okay then when you find the equilibrium point okay this is where you found the equilibrium point then you can say the voltage drop across this battery and the voltage drop across this string of this potentiometer must be equal that's where we have the equilibrium point galvanometer shows zero reading right so now i can say what is the voltage drop across this this will be e minus ir correct e minus ir e is the electromotive force of this battery r simple r is the internal resistance of this battery and what would be the voltage drop here kl what is k k is the voltage slope voltage gradient so we can say e minus ir equals k l k l so see we are measuring e minus ir earlier also we measured e minus ir in the first experiment but we used the voltmeter so through the voltmeter there might be a small current which is ignored but here you are using this potentiometer definitely we know there is no current leakage here that's why we say this method is better this method is better otherwise what what do we do you have the battery uh, have the circuit and then here you connect a voltmeter 
So, wall pinter is going to take some current from this, at least a small current goes there, right? Which we ignore, we assume it's, it to be 0, which we do not do here. Here, actually, galvanometer shows galvanometer is a high sensitive center 0 galvanometer. So, even if small currents are there, it will show it to us. E minus IR equals KL, right? Let us rearrange it. The This I can be written as E over into R. In this circuit, the total resistance is this R and the internal resistance R. So, you get this. Keep solving it. When you take R plus R common base, E into simple R will be cancelled, E into capital R remains, KL. Make it upside down, R plus R over ER, 1 over KL. From this, we can write if you divide it 1 over E plus R over E into 1 over R. Let us make 1 over L the subject of it, K has to come up, you will have K R over E into 1 over R plus K over E. So, what we are going to do, we are using a resistor box here, you can change the resistance of that resistor box, take different values of R, capital R and for each case you find the equilibrium length L. Then you are going to draw a graph 1 over L in the y axis, 1 over R in the x axis. All these are constants, potential difference, uh, potential slope K is constant, internal resistance R is constant, electromotive force of the battery, we have to keep it constant. That means, that is why I said in this circuit we use a tap switch so that E can be maintained constant. If you want to find simple R, take the gradient. Take the intercept, divide the gradient by intercept, you will get simple R. Clear? That is what the simple concept it is going to be. Let us see now. Apparatus a potentiometer, a 2 V accumulator, a 2 volt accumulator or 2 1.2 volt nickel cadmium cells connected in series. So, that is what we use to uh, power up the potentiometer. Dry cell, you are going to find the internal resi resistance of this dry cell only, a 0 to 50 ohm resistance box, resistance box, a tap key, sliding contact, a center 0 galvanometer and connecting wires. That is all we need. Theory I have already explained, see this is how the connection is going to be. The other circuit is here, you connect these two points and then the galvanometer. This will be a resistor box, we can change the resistance of this. When a cell of EMF and E and internal resistance R is sending a current through an external resistance R, if V is the potential difference between the terminals of the cell, V equals IR, we get this. But in the potentiometer, V is KL, so equate these two and finally, we get this equation that I have shown you earlier, Y, X, M, C. Look at the uh, calculations when 1 over L is plotted against 1 over R, gradient is going to be K R over E, intercept is going to be K over E, you divide gradient by intercept, R will be the answer. Method, set up the circuit as shown in the figure, test the accuracy of the circuit as done in the experiment number 33. What is that? In the previous experiment, what did we do? 33rd experiment, what did we do? Again, we use the potentiometer. Remember how we check the accuracy of it? You touch the sliding contact on one end of the string and on the other end of the string, then the galvanometer should show you readings in opposite directions. If it shows like that, it is accurate. If not, something is wrong there. Offer a resistance of R equals 50 ohms from the resistance box. Close the keys K1, K2 and K3. Open K3. K3 is for that... Uh, Safety, safety one, safety resistance for the galvanometer, first you have to keep it open and using the sliding key first determine the rough balance point on the wire, 
Disconnecting the safe res safety resistor, next obtain the accurate balance point. Measure the balance length L relevant to the potential difference V across the cell. Reduce the value of R of by 5 ohm each time and obtain the relevant balance length L for each value of R. Record all values. So, at least like 4 or 5 readings we have to get. We change the value of R 1 by 1, get like 5 readings and for those readings you get the balancing length L and draw the graph 1 over L versus 1 over R. Right? That is what the experiment is. Let us do this experiment, obtain the readings and see what answer we get for the internal resistance. All right. The apparatus that are required to do this experiment, mainly this is the potentiometer. We used in the previous experiment also potentiometer, where we will be giving the supply in between these two pins, right? And you have this 4 meter length string, uh, from starting from here up to here it is 1 meter, another 1 meter, another meter and 4, 4 meter length. So, what will happen? The, the potential that you give in between these two points, the potential that you give in between these two points will uniformly drop or uniformly be distributed across this string. If you look at this string, the string has equal cross section, uniform cross section, it does not change. So, the resistance is, is proportionate to the length. Because of that, ac across the length, the potential will uniformly decrease. Well, that is the potentiometer, right. Then these are the connection wires that we need, connecting wires or connection wires you can say. This is the battery of which we are going to find the uh, uh, internal resistance and this is the switch, tap switch, tap switch. Here, tap switch will be used only when you want to close the circuit. See, if you touch like this, it gets closed. If you touch like this, it gets closed. Then you can see the gap here. See, there is a gap here. There is a gap. So, what happens when you touch like this, that, that gap is closed. So, the circuit will be closed. When you leave the hand, it gets opened. Right. So, that is a tap switch. Similarly, we have an insert key that we have used in the previous experiments also. If you remove the key, circuit is open. If you insert the key, circuit is closed. That is what we call insert key. And this one, this is what we call sliding contact or contact slide. So, what we do with this, if we want to touch at different points of this string, we can touch like this. So, usually the other end will be connected to the galvanometer, right? This will be connected to the galvanometer and the other end, this end, we can use it to touch at different points of this string on the potentiometer like this, like this. Wherever I want, I can touch it to see where the equipotential point is. I will show you when we do the experiment. And this is a high resistance, we are using a 500 ohm resistance, it can be 1 kilo ohm, 500 ohm, because we use a big resistance to protect the galvanometer. The galvanometer we use here is a high sensitive galvanometer, so it can measure even small, small current flow. Through such high sensitive galvanometer, suddenly if a current, if a high current flows, it can damage the galvanometer. So, to ensure the galvanometer or the, the high current does not go through the galvanometer. What we do? We fix a high resistance in series with the galvanometer. After we found approximately the point where there is zero current, after we found the approximate point, then we can short circuit this high resistance. We can use a switch and we can short circuit it so that we can measure the point exactly, precisely. Again, I will show you when I do the experiment how to use this. This is the high sensitive galvanometer, like it is a center zero galvanometer, center zero galvanometer, you can see that, right. So, what happens zero is in the middle, right, it can measure on both sides, it can measure on both sides. So, whichever the side the current flows, this will show high sensitive center zero galvanometer. What is the difference between ammeter and this one? 
ammeter usually measures the current in one one side one direction because the ammeter will have a plus and minus if you have given lower potential point to the plus side and higher potential point to the minus side in an ammeter it wouldn't show you a reading plus has to be connected to the high potential side but this one even though there is a plus minus however you connect it it will show you a current if plus is connected to the high potential uh, high potential side then you can see see this side it's plus this side is plus this side is plus so if you have correctly connected it will show you a plus current on the other side it's minus you can see the minus so if if high potential side is connected to the minus side you will see a minus current in galvanometer so both sides it will show you the current flow and this is the rheostat we know how to use a rheostat right it has been even asked in the exam how to use the rheostat you know if you give one point here if you connect one point here the other point can be connected either to this point or this point let's say you have kept the middle point here right now if you have connected in between these two one here and one here then the resistance that you are using is this part can you see this part this part right in between this if you have connected this point and this point then the resistance you are using is here because current flows through this point all the way here it goes down this is the part of coil that we'll be using right so that's the rheostat and this is the resistor box resistor box you know resistor box you know resistor box right we can use different different uh, uh, values of resistance from a resistor box so that is also a variable resistor thing is if you use a rheostat you can change the resistance but you wouldn't know the value of resistance that you are using but when you are using a resistor box you can change the resistance and you can find the value of resistance as well that's resistor box and this is the power supply the direct current power supply we are using we have used that in previous experiments also so that is the dc power supply we are going to use in this experiment now let me show you how to connect the circuit what are we going to do we are going to use the potentiometer to find the internal resistance of this cell of this tri cell which we call a battery so how the circuit has to be connected i am going to explain step by step look at it carefully all right i'll show you part by part how to how to do the connection so before i before i connect the battery and the related circuit let me show you how to connect the potentiometer it's very simple right let me take the plus side of the power supply look at this plus side yes this plus side of this potentiometer let me connect to this end uh, of the potentiometer plus side of the power supply plus side of the power supply to this end of the potentiometer okay right and then the minus side i'm not directly giving it here i'm going to connect it through a rheostat so that if i have let's say 6 volt supply from here i wouldn't need all 6 volt here i might need only part of it maybe i need 3 volt then what i can do see i i take the rheostat and connect it in series connect it in series with the potentiometer so i'm connecting the rheostat in series with the potentiometer look at it carefully right so see what happens here right now the string in the potentiometer 
and this rheostat are in a series connection with this power supply. I haven't kept an additional switch here because on the power supply I have a switch. Whenever I want, I can switch it on and switch it off. If you don't have this switch, then what do you must do? If you don't have this switch, suppose if you are using a battery here, then you need to have a switch because you should not let the current continuously flow through this string because it might get heated. Because of heat, the, 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 the resistivity might change. Sometimes the length of this string also can change. So you should not continuously supply current to this string. That's why we have a switch in the power supply. Suppose if you are using a battery, as I mentioned, use a separate switch here, right. So imagine if I am using 6 volt supply here, right, say 6 volt supply if I am using. Now the entire 6 volt will not fall into this because this string and this rheostat are in series. Suppose imagine if this, this string has 50 ohm resistance, I don't know how much, if it is 50 ohm resistance and then I set the rheostat also at 50 ohm, 50, 50, then the 6 volt has to equally drop in the string as well as rheostat, in the potentiometer as well as rheostat. Then 3 volt will be here, in between these two points there will be 3 volt, that means across all this wire, along all the wire length, all the string length, you will have 3 volt, another 3 volt will be here. Suppose let's say this is 25 ohms, the string, the potentiometer string is 25 ohm and the, and the resistance I am setting in the rheostat is 50 ohm, then 1 is to 2, right? 6 volt, you will have 2 voltage here, you will have 2 voltage here you will have 3 voltage here or 4 voltage here, 2, 4, 1 is to 2. So basically what happens here, by using the rheostat, I can decide what proportion of this uh, uh, voltage, what proportion of this voltage will be dropped in the potentiometer. To adjust that, I can use this rheostat, right? So with this, this circuit is complete. Which circuit? Potentiometer, rheostat, and the power supply. This is complete. Now I will show you another circuit with the battery. See how we fix that. Let me show you how we are going to fix another circuit with the battery. Another circuit. Look at this. Let me take the plus side of the battery and connect it to one point of this resistor box, right? And then from the resistor box, let me take the other side and connect it to the switch, the, the key, ah, insert key. Let's keep the insert key open now, keep it open, keep it open. Then take it from the other end of the insert key and connect it to the minus side of the battery. Now look at it carefully. This is a separate circuit now. So far I have not connected to this. So with the potentiometer we have one circuit, with the battery resist the box and this switch. This is separate circuit. Once I close this switch, the current will start flowing through this circuit. When the current flows through the circuit, I will have E minus IR, right, across the battery, you know, internal resistance R, then you will have E minus IR uh, voltage drop here. The voltage difference between these two points will be E minus IR, right, okay. I can change the value of resistance I am using in this resistor box. I can change these values and I can change the current. Current I changes means E minus IR, the voltage difference across the battery will be different. Okay, so that is the other circuit. See what I do now, what I do now, let me take the plus side of the battery plus side of the battery
end connected to this point. Let me take the plus side of the battery. and connect it to the plus side of the potentiometer also. So, see what happens, this is where the plus side is, see, For plus from the power supply plus is here. Battery is plus is also connected. So, this is one circuit, this is another circuit, but both those circuits at one point I made a connection between them. Now, let us try to understand. Imagine I have set this such that approximately 3 voltage drops across this 4 meter wire, 3 voltage. How did I do that? I took 6 voltage from the power supply and then I made the resistance of the rheostat and this string approximately equal, approximately. So that let us say 3 voltage is approximately falling in this string. So from this point to this point, there is a 3 voltage drop. If I assume this point to be 6, this point will be 3, there is a 3 voltage drop, okay, keep it aside. Now look at the battery, battery, let us say battery is a, a EMF, let us say approximately is 1.5 voltage, so E minus IR is going to be something less than 1.5, E minus IR is going to be there, R is too small, might be 0 0.5, 0 0.4 ohms, still E minus IR, so around 1.4, 1.5 will have a voltage. If you have connected this point to 6 voltage, other side has to be 1.4 less approximately. So, 6 minus 1.4, 4.6, 6 minus 1.4, 4.6, which side, this side, the minus side of the battery is going to be at 4.6, just assume like that. Now, on this string, now you said this is at 6, this is at 3. So, 6, 3, there has to be some point in the middle right, because one side is 6, one side is 3, it uniformly reduces from 6 to 3, somewhere on the, on the wire, on this string, there is going to be 4.6 voltage point. So, if I can connect a galvanometer between the minus side of the battery and that 4.6 voltage point of this string, uh, if I can connect a galvanometer in between minus and same potential point on this string, equipotential point on the string, then galvanometer will show me zero current. Suppose if I connect it here, like okay, here it is 4.6, let us say if I touch it here at 5 voltage, then there will be a current flow, 5 to 4.6, there will be a current flow. Suppose this is at 4.6, I connect it here at 4 voltage, there will be a current flow, 4.6 to 4, there will be a current flow. 4.6. Here also I find the 4.6 voltage point, connect them using a uh, galvanometer, using a galvanometer, 4.6, 4.6, equipotential points, there cannot be a current flow. That is how I am going to find what is the voltage on the other side, right. Then using the length of the string, we can find out how much exactly that voltage drop has been, okay. So let me show you the galvanometer now, galvanometer. See how we are going to connect the galvanometer now. Take the minus side of the battery and connect it to one of those points. Does not matter whether it is plus or minus because it is two way galvanometer, send a zero galvanometer, you can connect it to any side. From the other side, I am going to take the sliding contact. Yeah. Let me connect the sliding contact here. Right. Not the right way to connect the galvanometer, I will tell you why, but for the moment think, here I have connected one side of the galvanometer to the minus point of battery. And this, this sliding contact, I can touch at any different point on this string and find out where I get equipotential. But you remember I told you we have to keep another large resistance in series with this galvanometer to protect it from high current. 
So let's connect that also in series. Right. Now I have connected 500 ohm resistance. It can be 1 kilo ohm or 500 ohm resistance in series with uh, the, the galvanometer to protect it. But I have to have a bypass also. Bypass means a short circuit for that because after finding the approximate zero current point, approximate equipotential point, then I have to close this so that make this zero, zero resistance, let more current flow through this to find the exact equipotential point. So let us have a setup here to find uh, to, to shortcut this as well. I will take this tap switch for this, tap switch. See parallel to the resistance, I am connecting this tap switch. Parallel to the resistance, I am connecting the tap switch. Right? It is parallel to the resistance. Can you see it is parallel to the resistance? Whenever I want, I can close it. When I close it, what happens? The current will flow through the tap switch because that has zero resistance. This has 500 ohm resistance. So when I close this, when I close this, current will flow through the tap switch. When I open this, then that is infinity resistance. Open circuit means infinity resistance compared to that 500 ohm is lower, current will go through the 500 ohm resistance. Clear? Right. This is what the arrangement is. Now what am I going to do? Let me remove, let us say, let me start with 10 ohm. After removing 10 ohm, you can see I am re removing 10 ohm from here. 10. 10 ohm. I remove 10 ohm. Make sure all others are tightened. Only 10 ohm has been removed. Make sure all others are tight. Now, if I close this switch, battery circuit current will start flowing. And if I switch on the power supply, the potentiometer circuit, potentiometer circuit current will start flowing. Then I can find the equilibrium point. Shall we see whether it, how it works? Right. So let us close the insert key now and get this battery circuit start running. Let us close it. With this, the battery circuit is running. Now let me switch on the power supply to the potentiometer circuit. Let me switch it on. Now potentiometer gets the supply. Right. Now, as I said, okay, if this is at, see, you can see I have kept it at 6 volt, 6 volt, uh, 6. So, if, if, if this is at 6 volt, this is going to be something less than 6. Let us say this is at 3 volt, okay. Here, approximately 1.5 might be the drop. Uh, battery, across the battery, it might be a drop of 1.5. So, 6, 1.5, 4.5. So, if I close, if I keep this tab, a sliding contact on one side of the string, see this is going to be close to 6 volt, 4.5 volt, the current will flow in one direction. If I keep it on the other end of the string, then 4.5 there, 3 here, it is going to be lower on this side, current will be flowing on the other side. So let us check whether when I, when I touch this sliding contact at two ends of the string, whether the current flows on two different sides. Let us check that. You can check the galvanometer. See, when I touch here, it goes to the plus side of it, to this side, plus side of it. 
when i touch it on the other side when i touch it on the other side it goes to the minus side can you see that since there might be a big current flowing through that i shouldn't keep it for a longer time i'm quickly touching and taking it up. see it's a negative current negative current on the other side it's a plus current plus current plus minus plus minus you can see that which means somewhere in the middle of this string there has to be an equilibrium point let's find that equilibrium point approximately let me touch here still plus plus there you go that's close to zero can you see approximately approximately that is where the zero point is now what we will do after finding the approximate zero point we can close this tab which means i can short circuit this i can short circuit this resistance and make sure current flows directly to the galvanometer so let's see this is where the approximate zero point is so now let's close this switch and see what happens let me close it it's on the plus side minus side still minus plus side see that is the point we get zero we get zero reading at that point zero reading that is see if i if i read the reading on the scale it shows 54 from this side it's 54 from my left side it's 54 let's understand what that 54 means ah see it is on the third string we has 54 from the positive side from from the 6 volt side on the third string that means 100 200 see i have to measure from this side right so 54 from here means 46 from here so it's actually 246 cm from the positive side of it from the positive end of this string at 246 cm i am getting the reading see at this point let me switch off this right we should not keep these circuits closed always because two reasons one when this is continuously closed then the 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 string gets heated resistivity might change length might change and if you keep the other circuit on continuously the the battery might start losing its emf but if you use the battery continuously the battery will use its emf we assume e to be constant in this experiment therefore only when we are taking the reading we close it and take the readings and then immediately after that you uh, open the circuits both circuits you keep it open so what's the reading we have got 246 cm when i use 10 ohm i have got 246 cm we are going to go for a graphical method so i need another few readings usually we take five readings for a straight line graph so let's take it down on a table and then continue changing this resistance to different different values and again getting the readings let's write it down now when i use 10 ohm on the resistor box the reading i have got on the on the potentiometer is 246 from the positive side when i use 10 ohm as the resistance we got l to be 246 cm 246 cm now what we are going to do we are going to change the resistance let's increase the resistance to 20 ohms and see what values we are getting look at this now this is at 10 10 is what i have removed now let's increase this to 20 let me remove this 20 plug 10 inside which means now 20 ohm resistance is being used from this resistor box let's switch on the battery circuit now let's switch it on right now the battery circuit is on let me switch on the power supply power supply is on we know previously 246 cm was the balancing point must be close to that this time also let's check let's see whether i get uh, readings on both sides 
yeah that is on the positive side, that is on the negative side. So, somewhere we are going to have the balancing point, let us check where it is, it is on the positive side, negative, positive, right that is quite close to 0 you can see that, yeah that is where the 0 is, that is an approximate point. Now, let me close this tab. You can see that is where the 0 is, that is where the 0 point is. Right, that is at 247 centimeters, 247 centimeters, third line 47 from here means that is 247. Let me open these circuits, let me open this circuit. So, you understand now when the resistance is increased, current through that circuit would have reduced. So, E minus I R minus I R, so E minus I R, when I increases, I, I reduces, E minus I R will increase. So, voltage drop across the battery would have increased now. That is why we are getting a, uh, a lengthy value because last time we got 246 centimeter. This time when we use 20 ohms, we get 247 centimeters. Shall we write it down? Look at this, we have used 20 ohms this time, 20 and L was 247 centimeters, 240 7 centimeters, right. We need another 3 values, let us increase the resistance 10 by 10, we will increase it to 30 ohms and see how it is going to be. 30 ohm means, look at the resistor box, 20 and let me take this 10 also off, now it is 30 ohms, 20 and 10 taken, that is 30, 30 ohms. Let me insert this key so that battery circuit is closed. Switch on the power supply. Now check whether it is plus minus both sides. It is plus, it is minus, plus, minus, plus, that is minus, plus, minus but close to 0. Approximately that is a 0 point. Now what do we do? Close this switch. Right, that is where we are getting the 0 this time. That is at 248 centimeters, 248 centimeters. Open the circuit. So, this time we have used 30 ohms and for 30 ohms what we have got is 248 centimeter. Can you see when the resistance increases, continuously length also increases 248 centimeter. Let us write it down. We have used 30 ohms. And the point was at 248 centimeter, L was 248. Let us take another 2 points, 4 or 5 points will be required to draw a graph. So, let us take another 2 points. I use 10 ohm, 20 ohm, 30 ohm, this time let us use 40, 40 ohms resistance. How am I going to use 40 ohm from here? Right, let me use this 20 and 20, remove this insert it here. So, that is 20 and 20 all together 40 ohms, 40 ohms. Close this battery circuit, switch on the DC supply, check plus minus current on both sides of the string, that is plus, minus, minus, plus, plus, minus. Right. So, let us find where the equilibrium is. 
that is plus minus approximately there we are getting the uh, equilibrium point. Let me close this circuit. There you go, that is the 0 point we are getting. The reading for that is 249 centimeters, 249, 49 from here, 49 from here means 100, 100 and a 49, 249 centimeters we are getting. This is when I used 40 ohm resistance in the battery circuit, okay. Let us write it down, 40 ohms resistance and L was 249 centimeters. Let us take one more value, that is increases to 50, right, now it is at 40, 20 and 20, right, you know there is a 50 here, let me use that 50, see, let me unplug that, plug this and let me close the other 20 also, right, everything is closed, only 50 is open, that means I am using 50 ohms resistance, okay. And one more thing I will tell you here, when you are using this meter bridge or potentiometer, with this sliding contact, you just have to touch at different points, even though we call it a sliding contact, even though we call it a sliding contact, avoid sliding on the string, because when you are sliding on the string, sometimes this can scratch the string, so that the cross section might vary. When the cross section varies, the resistivity and everything will change. Then we cannot assume, we cannot assume L to be proportionate to the resistance. So make sure it can be potentiometer, it can be meter bridge, wherever, whenever you are using this sliding contact, avoid sliding it on the string, wherever you want, touch it and take it. Touch it, take it, that is how you have to do it, huh? avoid sliding on it, right. Now let me close this. Battery circuit is closed, switch on the power supply, check whether you get both sides current, plus, minus. There has to be an equilibrium point, let us find it, it is on the plus side, minus side, plus, minus, right, that is where approximately it is 0. That is an approximate point. Now let us close this switch. Right, that is where we are getting 0 point. See again. That is the 0 point. That is the 0 point. The reading for that we are getting is 250. Third line 50 from here means. 250. When I used 50 ohms resistance, the equilibrium point was at 250, 250. Let us let's write, write that down also on the table. 50 ohms we have used, 50 ohms we have used and L was 250 centimeter. L was 250 centimeter, clear, right. Now we can take all these values, we can write the equations, we can get the equation for the graph, draw the graph, from the graph we can find out the internal resistance of this battery, right. So let us see what calculations and what graph we can draw and what value we are getting for the internal resistance. You all can see the readings we have got, I have written down in the table here, R and L values. Then I calculated 1 over R and 1 over L also, 1 over R, 1 by 10, 1 by 20, 1 by 30, 1 by 40, 1 by 50. Also 1 over L, I have written into 10 to the power minus 3 centimeter minus 1. So we get these values, right. Let us draw the graph. 1 over L has to be in the y axis, 1 over R has to be in the x axis. Remember, we have to get the gradient as well, gradient and intercept as well. So, 4.07 
approximately 3.95 would be enough look at this how i decide that is 0.1 to 0 0.05 the change is only 0 0.02 right so from here also maybe 3.95 could be a starting point or even 3.9 from that we can start because the intercept won't go to to below that how do i decide that look at the changes 0 0.05 the change is this much change is this much so depending on that only i'm thinking let's see take the grid x axis and y axis we have 1 over r in the x axis 1 over r correct ohm minus 1 ohm minus 1 and 1 over l here which is centimeter minus 1 centimeter minus 1 0 let's start at 3.9 if i start from here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 I can get 3.97 there, 4.07 there. So let's fix 4.07 here, 4.06, say 4.04, 4 4.02, 4, 3.98, 3.96, 3.94, 3.92, this will be 3.9. My expectation is intercept is going to be above this only, it won't go below that. 1 over r values, it goes up to 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. So, we will take 4, 8, 12, 20, 24. We'll take 0 0.4 by 0 0.4. 0 0.4. We'll take it like this. After 5, let's mark it as 0 0.2. We don't need 0 0.2. We need 0 0.1. 0 0.02. 0 0.02. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 0 0.04. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 0 0.06, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 0 0.08, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is 0 0.1. Good scales, first one, 0 0.1, 4.07, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, the last one, 4.07 is here, 0 0.1, 4.07 is here, 0 0.1, 0 0.07. Point zero five four point zero five point zero five four point zero five point zero five has to be middle here four point zero five four point zero five is here right next point zero three three four point zero three point zero three three point zero two then point zero three is here then this has to be divided by 3, maybe here, yes, 0 0.033 is there and what is the y value? 4.03, 4.03, 4 is here. Next one, 0 0.025, 4.02. 0 0.025, 2, 2, 5, 3, 3, 5, no, 2, 5 has to be uh, here, 0 0.025, 4 4.02, 4.02, 4.02 here, right. 
0.024. We have three points on the straight line. Apparently, two points seem to have a significant deviation. This is okay. That has some significant deviation. Probably that there could have been some error in the readings, right? 246 centimeter for 10 ohm. That seems to be a uh, having significant error. Anyway, out of the five points, three points are on the straight line. Let's draw the straight line. Right. That's how the graph is. That's how it is. Right. This point is okay. Slight deviation. That has bit of a significant deviation. Could have been some error in the experiment, which is very common when you do experiments. That's fine. At least three points, they fall exactly on a straight line. All what we need, gradient and uh, intercept. Intercept is easy. 3.99. You can see here. 3.99 is the intercept. Gradient. To find gradient, I need two points. Two points. Let's take this point. This is 0, 0, 008. Point 0, 0, 0008 because 0, 0, 004, 8, 12, 16, 20. Yes. Comma 4. Do we have another point like that? Maybe this point I can take, which is at point 0, 0076, and this is going to be 4.08. 4.08. So, we can write now gradient is 4.08 minus 4.08 over, over uh, 0 0.076 minus 0 0.08, 0 0.08, 76 minus 8 is 68, 0 0.068. That's 80 by 68, 40 by 34, 20 by 17. Intercept is 3.99, 3.99. So, I need to get the ratio between M and C. That will be the R. M is 20 over 17 over 3.99. So, that is 20 over, maybe I can divide 20 over 17 first, 20 by 17, 1, 17, 30, 1, 17, 13, 130, it will be 7, 9, 1, 1, 110, it has to be 6. So, it is 1.176 divided by 3.99, 1176 divided by 399. So, almost dividing by 400, is not it? Anyway, let us see 0 0.3, 7, 9, 10, 9, 16, 9, 7, that is it, 790, not 2, it is going to be 1, but then if I round it to approximately 0 0.32. 0 0.32 ohm is the internal resistance we get. 0 0.32 ohm, ohm is the internal resistance we get. Clear? How did we get that? You found the gradient of the graph. You found the intercept of the graph. Get the ratio between gradient and intercept. Right? That gives you the internal resistance. Clear? Right. So, that is all about that experiment. Please go through all the experimental procedures once again to understand how we have done that and why we have done each step. After this, let us see as usual some past paper questions that have been tested on this experiment. All right, children. Now, let us see the past paper questions that have come in this uh, experiment and related areas. See, I have taken 1994 paper. The following diagram shows the apparatus that can be used in an experiment to determine the internal resistance R of cell E1. Okay. AB is the potentiometer string. G is the center zero galvanometer. E is the accumulator cell. E, e is the accumulator. 
R1 is 1 kilo ohm resistance. R1. Right? R1 is here. Okay. S1 is plug key. S1 is plug key or oh, insert key. You can see S2 is tap switch. X is the resistance box. J is the sliding contact. Right. We are familiar with all these. We have used this in all the experiments. Simple, very simple, very, very simple. In the above diagram, show how you would connect the given objects to make a suitable circuit to find the internal resistance of R of the cell E1. So how do we usually do? You take the potentiometer string, right? Connect that to a battery. And then you have, this is the battery that you want to find E1. Then connect that to another circuit. Right, tap switch, connect these two points, plus side, plus side, both plus sides of the batteries, galvanometer, that's what the circuit has to be, this also will have a switch. Right, let's see whether we can do this, first let me make the circuit for potentiometer with that potentiometer is ready potentiometer is ready now the other one now look at this this resistor box both ends are here at these points so what we will do connect it here from here you are going to take it right Check this. Right. So the battery and the resistor box circuit is here. We don't have a switch for that. They have not given a separate switch for that. So we can just connect it that like that. And then this is the safety setup for it. Galvanometer. And it goes here. Correct. Battery and the variable resistor box. They are in one circuit. Ah, and then I have to connect these two also. Right. So the Battery is plus side is connected here. Battery is minus side goes through galvanometer and comes here. Right. This is a circuit that we usually use. Ideally, we should have had a switch here, but they have not given us another switch. Why is it advisable to use an accumulator for E? When you give the supply to potentiometer, you have to ensure that the voltage gradient remains constant throughout the experiment. Which means the voltage supply has to be stable one. Right. The EMF should be stable for the battery. That's why we use the accumulator or else we can use the AC to DC converter that we have in the lab. That's what we use in the experiment. Then you can ensure it always give you constant supply. There is no rundown of battery. Right. If you don't have the AC to DC converter power supply, then we can use the the wet cell or the, the accumulator cell rather than the dry cell because dry cell run, runs down quickly. So we can say to maintain the voltage supply stable for a longer time. For a longer time. Why is resistance R required? Where is resistance R? This one. Why is resistance R required? R1. R1 is 1 kilo ohm. Where is R? That's about R1 only. Okay. Why is R1 required to protect galvanometer from the high current? Galvanometer from high current. This is X. This is R1. To protect we know that galvanometer from high current. When will you close switch S2? S2 is the switch when in the, in the galvanometer circuit. You can see this S2. So when do you close this? After you find a rough balancing point, point or after you find the rough equilibrium point 
then you can close switch S2. So let's say when will you close switch S2? After finding the rough or approximate rough or approximate balancing point. We have already explained and we have used galvanometer in all the experiments we have done or in many experiments we have done. That's why I always say when you are learning, come in the order. If you take electricity, go to the first experiment we have done in electricity, practical number 31. From that, then you have to come to 32A, 32B, 33, 34. Why? Certain things I already explained in a couple of experiments already, I will not be explaining now. So if you missed those two, if you did not watch those two, and now if you come and look at this, you might find it how this answer comes. So make sure if you study a particular lessons, particular areas, experiments, go in the order that I have done. Next. You are asked to draw a suitable graph to find R. What measurements will you take for this? So look at this, you remember V equals E minus IR. Right, E minus I is going to be E over R plus R. R is the external resistor which is given by the resistor box and symbol R is the internal resistance into R. So you solve this is going to be ER, ER cancel, E capital R over R plus R. On the other side, the V has to be equal to KL also. KL is the, K is the what voltage gradient on the potentiometer, L is the balancing length. From this you can make it upside down, 1 over KL equals, if you make it upside down, ER, 1 over E plus, then R over RE. So one, uh, let's multiply by K. One over L equals K R over E. One over R K over E. That's how the formula will be. Y M X C. So we change the resistance in the resistor box and get different different R values and accordingly the L values, right, the relevant L values and draw the graph like this. So they are asking, what measurements will you take for this resistance of resistor box and let's say X, this is X, they marked as X. Balancing length in potentiometer. L. Change X to different values. And measure L. each time. Measure L each. When all the resistor plugs are inserted in resistor box X, it is not advisable to connect X to the circuit. Explain why. Now look at this. You have the battery like this. And this is the resistor box. And then you have the switch. It was, uh, we didn't have a switch also. Okay. Like this. So what is wrong if we, if we insert all the keys and connect it? When you insert all the keys into the resistor box, resistance of that box is zero. Then what will happen? This is going to be zero, R equals zero. That means it's like you are short circuiting the battery, right? There will be a very high current flow, very high current flow. What is wrong with very high current flow? Then a lot of heat will be wasted and the battery might run down faster by E minus IR, I is going to be very high, right? Let's say the current flow in the circuit will be very high, will be very high, leading to 
heat loss or heat generation as well as faster rundown of battery faster rundown of battery next a uh, student observed that the dependent variable in E above remained constant after all the connections were made appropriately. What is the possible reason for this observation? So what happens now look at this. You have the circuit like this. Right. And then the potentiometer. Now you have connected this galvanometer and here. There will be safety resistance. I did not draw that. Now, what they say when you change when you change this R, the balancing length L did not change. That remained constant. You remember KL has to be equal to E minus IR. Uh, which we solved and found out KL equals it was E capital R over R plus R. So what could have happened there? When L doesn't change means, okay, we'll look at the first equation itself, that's easy. When, when R changes, ideally, see, when R increases, I should decrease. But here they say I did not decrease. The possible reason for this is, those who have seen the resistance box closely would have known one of the keys in the resistance box is for infinity resistance. Let's say you have unplugged that already. After unplugging that, even though you have kept all other keys plugged in, the resistance is going to be infinity. That means at this point, the circuit will become open circuit. Open circuit, infinity resistance. So if it is infinity resistance, after that, however you change other resistances, Still, the infinity doesn't change because it's going to be infinity and another 10 ohms. Infinity and another 20 ohms. Infinity and another 50 ohms. So, it's anyway infinity. Then what will happen? There won't be a current flow. The moment I become 0, KL will always be equal to E. So, either the infinity key has been removed or else the infinity key has not been plugged properly. It doesn't, doesn't make the connection properly, then this issue can arise. So let's write here the key for the key for infinity resistance in the resistance box. May have been removed. Right. A student says that the EMF of cell E1 must always be smaller than E to do this experiment. Is this statement true? Give reasons for your answer. What is E? E is the battery that has been connected to the potentiometer. So E, here you will get E. Right. Then we have the other battery. Here what we have? E1 minus IR. So you to get a balancing point, to get a balancing point, they are asking whether E has to be always bigger than E1. Not necessarily. Do you know why? Here the voltage is going to be E1 minus IR. Let's say this is 2 voltage. This is also 2 voltage. Still balancing is possible. How? E1 minus IR can be less than 2 voltage. It can be 1.8, 1.9. Understand? So sometimes, okay, let's say, let's say this is, this is 2.1 voltage, E1 is bigger, still balancing can be possible because E1 can be 2.1 voltage, whereas E1 minus IR can be, can be possibly less than 2 voltage, possible. As long as E1 minus IR becomes less than 2 voltage, less than E, the balancing is possible. So what is required for us is E1 minus IR has to be less than E, not even less than E. 
E1 can be bigger than E, but E1 minus IR has to be less than E, then balancing is possible. So they ask, E1 must always be smaller than E, not necessarily. Is this statement true? No. Due to the current flow, as long as E1 minus IR is smaller than E, balancing is possible, balancing is possible, right? So that's quite an easy question, nothing much complicated there. Let's see another one now, 2012 paper, 2012. Figure 1 shows an incomplete diagram of potentiometer arrangement used for measuring the internal resistance of a cell. Right, same thing. In addition to the items corresponding to the symbols shown in the figure 1, if you are provided with the items shown in figure 2, figure 2 to perform this experiment. Now, look at this. This is the potentiometer. They have the battery. They have a variable resistance there. Probably we need to have a switch here. See, now this is empty. And then... Battery with the internal resistance they have drawn in the dotted box and there is an external resistance and switch. And here this part is empty, ideally it has to be a galvanometer and then the safety resistance and the switch are there. It has to be galvanometer here, right? And this is the plug key, the sliding contact, all that is there. Now, this is the figure 2, they have given a uh, center zero galvanometer and this is a galvanometer because they have marked G in the middle. See, this is also G, this is also G, but this is not center zero. This is just usual galvanometer. What is the problem with the usual galvanometer zero in one side? It can't measure current on both sides. It can measure current only on one side. We can't use it. We need a center zero galvanometer in this case. Therefore, this is not going to be useful anytime in this case. Then they have a tap switch and an insert key and an insert key. Which item would you connect between A and B? Here, in this one, we don't use the tap switch. It has to be the insert key because potentiometer, after you switch it on, after you give the supply, you have to give it a couple of seconds to, you know, stabilize. The voltage gradient has to stabilize. Then only you can continue with the experiment. Tap switch won't work like that, right? The potentiometer needs to stabilize, right? Even the meter bridge needs to stabilize. Then only we can find the balancing lens. Therefore, here you can't use the tap switch. We have to use the insert key. Which item? Item 4. Which item would you connect between CD? CD, the galvanometer, isn't it? Yes. Sender 0 galvanometer, item 1. So simple. In this experiment, after the apparatus is set up properly, two balance lengths must be taken. What are they? Two balance lengths. Let's see. Usually before closing this switch, we will take one balancing length. That means it, it should give you the E only. Then after closing this, because here, see, this is the fixed resistance. So you can't change that to different, different values and get a graphical method is not possible as the usual way we do because this is a fixed resistance. So if you need two readings, only option to you, without current you can get one reading, with current you can get one reading. So let's say with switch S open and with switch S closed. Don't go explaining too much. Simply, they asked which are the two balancing lengths. Switch S closed. With switch S closed. If the balance lengths taken by a student were 90 centimeter and 80 centimeter, calculate R. So, first one has to be E equals KL 90 K. Second one, E minus IR has to be E minus IR has to be uh, 80 centimeter, 80 K. So you can divide it uh, E over E minus IR 90 
9 over 8. 8e equals 9e minus 9ir. Bring it here 9ir is e. What is this i? i has to be e divided by e divided by r was 5 ohm. So, 5 plus internal resistance. Voltage divided by external resistance plus internal resistance. That is the current into r has to be e. Cancel e and e. 9r equals 5 plus r. Bring it here. 8r is 5. R equals 0 0.625 ohms. 0 0.625 ohms you are getting for R. 0 0.625. For maximum accuracy, the potentiometer must be adjusted so as to give largest possible values for the balance length. That's what we discussed earlier also. The balance length should not be in the sides. It must be somewhere in the middle so that the, the, the value you are reading is large. Why? Fractional error can be minimized. Error divided by measurement is what you call fractional error. That can be minimized when the measurement is big. Which of the two balance lengths mentioned in B above must be used for this adjustment? Give the reason for your answer. 90 centimeter. That's a bigger one, right? 90 and 80. 90 is a big one. Simple. Even they have mentioned you must use the bigger value. Since it is the largest measurement since this is the largest measurement the fractional error of measurement can be minimized can be minimized With what item do you perform this adjustment? For maximum accuracy, the potential meter must be adjusted so as to give largest possible value. So, how do we, you know, adjust that? That's why we have a rheostat in the circuit. Can you see? Look at the circuit. Suppose, let's say, okay, you have got the reading here. We want to increase it. What can we change here? Rheostat. Reduce the resistance of rheostat then you get more, more voltage here. Or increase the value of rheostat, then you get less voltage here. Suppose if the value, the, the, if the balancing length is here, but you want to move it to this side, that means you have to reduce the voltage drop across the string. If you want to reduce the voltage drop across the string, increase the rheostat, so more voltage falls into the rheostat, less voltage falls into the string. So how do we adjust it? Using the rheostat R1. With what item do you perform the adjustment? Rheostat R1. If an R value much larger than 5 ohm is used in the circuit when taking measurements under B above, would you expect a more accurate or less accurate value for R? Give reasons for your answer. Right. What will happen when R is high? When R is high, R is high, see, look at this. First, we take the value for E, which was 90 centimeter. Then we take E minus IR, which was 80. Now, what will happen if, if R is high, this I will drop. Uh, I is what? I is E over R plus R. So, if R increases, R goes to a bigger value, I will drop. If I drops, what will happen? E minus IR will increase. Then this will come closer to 90 centimeter. Right. So if the two values are becoming closer and closer, the error in the calculation, error in the measurements can be significant. As long as the two values are bigger, the error, percentage error or fractional error will be minimized. Because what matters to us is the difference between these two. Right. The fractional error will be minimized if the difference between these two is bigger right so that in that case having the current at high is better having high current is better so that it will have significant difference so let's write that see i divided and found that here see in this calculation another option could have been easily rather than dividing it look at this rather than dividing it you could have even subtracted and found it 
Yes, when you subtract it, that means I R equals 10 K. So, I need to find R, even that is possible. Right. So, let us say, uh, would you expect a more accurate or less accurate value? If a larger R is used, less accurate value. Why? The difference between readings will decrease, which will lead to higher fractional error higher fractional error understand so that part is a tricky one last one they asked apart from that all those questions are straightforward from the experiment anyone who have followed the experiment with the concept would have been comfortably answering all these questions not at all difficult right so as i always say take the experiment go through the procedures that we followed not on the book not on the book what we have done in the video, go through that, study that, couple of times go through that, make your own notes, then do these past papers. Right? After practicing these past papers, go to the exam. What do you get in the exam must be so simple for you. You can trust me. Right. So practice all this. Let's meet up with another experiment in the section uh, electricity in the next session.